Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, my talk about nonlinear dynamics on multiplex networks. The reason for uh, introducing multiplex networks and, in general, more complex uh, other uh, network structures is that after almost 20 years working on complex networks, we have realized that these networks are not complex enough. And then we need to deal with new paradigms of the organization of the topology of complex networks. And of course, the resulting dynamics is very sensitive to this new type of organization. In particular, when we talk about uh, multiplex networks, it's just a type of what is usually called multi-layer network, in which basically what we have is a set of layers, in, but in every single layer, we have exactly the same set of nodes. But then in the different layers, we, we can have different connections between the layers. And then in particular, we have a one-to-one -one relation between the nodes in one layer and nodes in the other layers. This just one-to-one -one connection is very important for this setting. In particular, this multiplex uh, construction is uh, suitable for, uh, for instance, for communication networks in which we can imagine we have an email network, we can have a Twitter network, we can have a Facebook network, and so on. And then what we know is that every single node corresponds to a user in a different communication network, but this user can be repeated in the other layers because we have different ways of communicating. We are the same node in all the layers, but we can have different connections in Twitter, in Facebook, or in Instagram. And then these different connectivity patterns for different channels is what in these terms is translated in this construction of the multiplex network. Another example of uh, this multiplex network is that these of transportation systems, and here in particular, I am showing you some pictures of uh, air flights between different uh, airports in Europe. And here you can see that different uh, companies fly from different airports, but the airports are exactly the same. So you can imagine that you have the same set of airports at the different layers, and every single layer corresponds to different companies. But then when you have to transfer, you have, you have to make a connection from one company to the other company, you have to use one of these airports. And then it means that here, this is the transfer between the layers that corresponds to different companies. Well, when we have to characterize the, top, the, the topology of these networks, then of course we have to generalize the properties, the, the constructions that we use in, uh, let's say, single layer networks. In this case, we introduce this type of generalized adjacency matrix in which uh, here is an object of uh, four indices that corresponds to nodes and layers. So now this uh, adjacency matrix Mij alpha beta corresponds when alpha is equal to beta, corresponds to the adjacency matrix of a single layer, alpha. When i is equal to j, actually this corresponds to the possible links between the layers of node i. And then when i is different from j and alpha is different from beta, then this uh, matrix is zero because we don't allow to have cross connections between the layers. So a node in one layer is not connected to a different node in a different layer. So this is the reason for which it's very important to identify the set of nodes in one layer with another, with the same set of nodes in the other layer. Then what we can do is write any dynamical equation of the evolution of the system in this way, which we can define a generalized functional, which depends precisely on this set of variables. In particular, uh, when we use uh, multiplex networks, we imagine that we have a one-to-one -one relation that is repeat that is the same for all the nodes in the, in the in the system. Then usually, when we say that m i i of alpha beta, and then we identify this with a single number m alpha beta that can be zero or one, it means actually whether the layers are connected or not. In this case, in the, in the case on the, on the left, what we have 
is that in this case, what we have is that we have three layers, but layer one and layer three are not connected. But here, now on the, on the right, what we have is that note that layer one and layer three are connected. Then in this case, this this way on the on the bottom is how we can write in a general form the equation for the dynamical evolution of the system. Well, then uh, when trying to, to, to look at the different sort of dynamics, of course, the first thing to look at is, which is the, the evolution of, uh, of uh, linear uh, equations, and which uh, usually in, in physical terms is what we call diffusion. And then we can also, in, in a, particularly in our group, we have analyzed different types of nonlinear behavior that corresponds to uh, other physical phenomena. The case of, uh, of uh, diffusion was analyzed in, in several works in, in, in our group, but this is not the object of uh, this uh, talk now. What is important to realize is that when we, have, when we have a multiplex, it can happen that we can have different type of origin for the physical dynamical phenomena taking place in the different layers or across the layers. This is what can happen, for instance, that we can have the same type of dynamics for the interlayer and the intralayer, which is the case of diffusion. Or we can have the same intralayer for all the layers and different uh, interlayers. And even we can we can have different layers and no interlayer connection at all. We will see some we will see particular examples of this. The first example that I want to focus is uh, in the case that we have been studying of reaction diffusion systems. Here in this, this setting, we can imagine that we have, for instance, we have a population of, of predators and a population of prey, and then the two layers correspond to the ways that predators or prey can move in a certain ecological environment. Now, the different nodes in the connection corresponds to physical patches where the two species can coexist, the two species can react. So in this case, this equation here, for instance, that corresponds to the, to the top layer, it means that imagine that U is the population of prey, F, U, and B gives you how in a single node between the two layers, so it corresponds to this blue line here, this blue link here, this F corresponds on how a node, node I, then the two species interact. And then G is again, this is the re how the two species interact, but this is how it affects V and this F is how it affects U. And then here you have other terms, which is sigma is the mobility of one of the species of U, in the top layer and sigma b is the mobility of the other species in the other layer. And L, I, J, U, and B corresponds to the Laplacian matrix for the two different species in one layer or the other layer. Because here, this is the here this is where the basic idea of uh, of multi of multiplex lies because here what we can have is that the Laplacian matrix for the two species can be different because the two species can move in a different way in this set of patches. We can have, for instance, we can have uh, species that move on the on um, on the ground and then we can have a species that fly or the or and so and then of course that the different ways of escaping from these patches are different for these species in this case what we have found is that a phenomena which is well known this of the of the forming of a Turing patterns in this type of reaction diffusion system and for those of you that are familiar with this type of, uh, of system, just to remind you that the, in this case, the instability appears when, whenever you have two coexisting species, and then one of the species is, moves much faster than the other. But now, since the way that the species move does not depend on, uh, on let's say on the mobility itself, but also depends on the way that the patches are connected, what we get is that now the condition for the stability of the system is related 
to the usual parameters, so the parameters that you expect to the partial derivatives of this, this f and g functions, it depends on the mobilities on sigma u and sigma v, but also depends on the degree of one of the layers and the degree in the other layer. So now, if you fix constant these parameters here, all these other parameters here, then there is a key relationship between KU and KB. And here you can see in this figure in the bottom, how in this, this is the red line below which there is a multiplex induced instability. Because here you can see that there is a relation between KU and KB that in the particular case that we were implementing here, it's generating an instability. And this instability is just, as I'm pointing, is just related to the relation between KU and KB. So now it is these different degrees in the, in the network that can induce the appearance of this instability. Another example that we have been studying in our in our group is this of language competition. In this case, the, multi, the multiplex nature of the system comes from the fact that in the two layers, you have, of course, in every single layer, you have a set of users. Imagine that if for the top layer, it's uh, every single node is one user that interacts with other users in the system, for instance, at work. And then in the other layer, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence because in the other layer, this node corresponds to the same agent on the top layer. But now, this is the network of connections that this uh, node has, for instance, at home. So here, in this sense, what we are, we are distinguishing is the use of a language, of the use of a norm in, in general, the use of, a, of, a, of, a, of a decision taking in one layer that can correspond, for instance, to work. And in the other layer, you are the same agent, but you, can, you are sharing your social network with a different set of agents. And of course, there is, in this case, the link between the one node in one layer with the other node in the, with the same node in the other layer corresponds to the fact that the population, so that the, your status in one layer is determined, is, can be copied, let's say, to your status in the other layer. In this case, blue means, <coughs> excuse me, blue means speaking language A, and purple means speaking language B. So here we write these equations for the probability of a node I in layer alpha turning its state for speaking language A to speaking language B as this set of equations. And here you can see here GIJ of alpha is the connectivity is layer alpha. And then here this gamma corresponds to the probability of copying this state. In this case, what we observe is that coexistence of the two languages is enhanced in this setting with respect to what we expect. And then just to finish, I will show you some results about synchronization, because this is in particular important in uh, neural systems. And in this case, what we have uh, proposed is, is a model for the dynamic, for, for what we call the C elegance multiplex, in which we have implemented a model in which for one type of connections, because we, here we have identified six communities in the C elegance neural network, and then we propose to have one type of connection for within the communities and another type of connections between nodes belonging to different communities. In this case, what we obtain is a kind of a chimera state behavior because when some of these parameters are below some critical value, excuse me, what we have is we have a coherent behavior when these parameters are very different. We have an incoherent behavior, but in between we have some chimera, some chimera behavior in, in which some of the of the communities are synchronized, but the other communities behave in a quite chaotic way. And finally, just uh, to point out that uh, we also obtain some relationship between uh, functional and structural networks uh, in the brain, because in this case, what we were proposing was a kind of uh, example of a Kuramoto-like uh, model with a 
a frustration parameter alpha. And in this case, what we have is a relation between some sort of topology of, of a structural network in which we run some dynamics like this one. And then the result of this uh, run of this uh, dynamics is a kind of a functional network. And what we obtain is an important property is that when we have some symmetries in the in the system in the structural network, then these uh, symmetries in the structural network turn out to be a kind of synchronized or correlated of correlated nodes in a functional resulting of these dynamics. Okay, and here we're applying uh, our results for for a particular case of the brain, and this is basically what we were obtaining in these regions, this the blue region and the, and the green region, were very, very correlated, even if they are not close, and, uh, red and, and red and blue here are not correlated, even if they are very close. So there is a relation, so not necessary relation of synchronization between nearest, nearest regions in the, in the brain, but it can also happen that far away regions can also become synchronized. And just to finish, just to get your idea that, that this type of nonlinear models are very important in this case in the uh, layer structure of the system. Okay, that's it, and thank you very much for your attention.